Hi, my name is David P. Shapiro. I'm the owner and managing partner of the Law Office of David Shapiro, located in San Diego, California, where my firm helps good people regain control of their future when charged with a crime. In this video, I want to talk to you about a common misconception when you're charged with or when you're arrested for a DUI where there's an accident. A lot of times what we'll see is when people are arrested for a DUI, you're involved in a collision, you're hurt, maybe there's another car, hopefully not, hopefully there's no passengers that are injured, but situations where you're believed to be under the influence, there's an accident, you're transported to a hospital, technically you're under arrest when you're being taken to that hospital, and then law enforcement has a difficult decision. Do they want to release you from custody, meaning you know, you're no longer under arrest, or do they want to basically put someone at your bedside until you can be arraigned by a judge and have that court proceeding, whether in a courtroom or whether where we come to you in a hospital room and do the arraignment, the first court appearance there. And there's this belief out there that, you know, well, I got arrested uh, for DUI. I went to the hospital. I was there. The cops were there. California Highway Patrol was there with me for a little bit. And then he just gave me this certificate of release that says that, you know, I was detained only and it says this thing about, you know, 849B4 of the, uh, of the penal code, you know, that, that says that it's just a detention, so I wasn't really arrested, so I think I'm good. And what we see people do, which is wrong, and is not by any stretch of the imagination the right way to handle cases like this, is they think they're out in the clear. And they get released from the hospital, and hopefully they're okay, or they may have to continue with their medical treatment. And they, they, they want to, subconsciously or intentionally, sort of put that in the past. The, the, the accident, the collision, you know, the, the, the arguably drinking and driving, whatever is alleged to have happened. And what happens is that doesn't mean that's the end of the case. All that means is basically the cops didn't want to stay by your bedside for more than a couple of hours. They're still going to prosecute the case. They're still going to investigate the case. They're still going to refer it to the district attorney's office for prosecution, and in all likelihood, what's going to happen is if you're not being attentive and on top of it with a quality, locally experienced criminal defense firm representing you, reaching out to the prosecutor, reaching out possibly to a CHP investigating officer to find out the status of the investigation, reaching out to a district attorney's office trying to present any evidence, whether mitigation evidence uh, or otherwise, to try and prevent charges from being filed, and if charges are going to be filed, to at least have an idea and at least try and avoid a situation that we see far too often where clients come in, hey, I, was, you know, I was involved in an accident in December, uh, you know, May, uh, I'm coming out of my house, going to work, and I get arrested on this warrant that I knew nothing about. Well, our first question is always, well, okay, well, what was going on from December to May? Did you, know, you set up your DMV hearing? Did you hire another law firm that was reaching out to the district attorney, reaching out to, to law enforcement? Well, no, I didn't do anything. Why not? Well, you know, I got this, I got this certificate of release thing that says I was no longer arrested, so I thought it was good. Big mistake. The best way to handle those types of situations, if you find yourself arrested for a DUI where you're injured, particularly in situations where other parties may be injured, because that's when you're looking at more serious charges, potentially felony charges, is once you get out of the hospital, or even if you're in the hospital, if you're able to make that call yourself or have a loved one make that call for you, reach out to a quality, locally experienced criminal defense law firm, explain the situation, and they should be able to advise you of your options moving forward. One of those options, and oftentimes the best option, is to bring on a firm that will be able to do some investigation, will be able to gather some background information, will be able to advise you on what you should be doing from the time you get out of the hospital, whether it's two days, two weeks, or two months, until the time whether or not charges are going to be filed. What you could do to help your case from a mitigation perspective, what you could do to help your case from an evidence perspective. Because it is the worst feeling, and we see it far too often when clients reach out to us and we ask them, well, what's been going on the last couple of months? And they say, I didn't think anything was going to happen. Because these are valuable times where you could do a lot of good things setting your case up for success and trying to minimize the damage that may already be done. So if you have any questions about DUIs, uh, particularly DUIs with injury, DUI accidents where someone's hospitalized or where they receive this 849, open parentheses B, open parentheses 4, uh, sort of citation or paperwork, 
reach out to my firm, 619-295-3555. At the very least, we'll be able to go over your options on how best to deal with your situation moving forward so you're able to make an informed decision about how you want to handle your matter. 619-295-3555.